Hey guys, so today we're going to be breaking down the Zenkai for Trunks and Mai. I'm sure everybody is extremely excited about this Zenkai. Uh, this game certainly doesn't have a track record of straight up obliterating every single Trunks they've ever released, so I'm very excited to get into this card. They're sure to be very, very good, of course. I couldn't tell I'm being very sarcastic. Uh, oh, that is... That's not good at all. <laughs> Uh, what the hell is that? 271 main stat? For a Zenkai character? Defenses are solid, but... <laughs> Alright, all right. keep in mind, they are a melee type. They're not a support type. They're not a defense type. 271? I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about just, like, lower than LF stats at this point for, like, normal Zenkai characters. Hybrid say in future Vegeta clan, so I mean some solid teams this character is on, so they do work across a wide variety of different tags. Um, okay, so bleed on strike card. You know, I always forget to do this because I always record preemptively, uh, but I'm going to pull up their details so we can compare the post to pre Zenkai version of the character. Um, all right, so let's continue here. So the blue card is the Shining Divider, which does not have blast armor. They just decided not to add blast armor to this melee blue card. Major explode damage, 25% to damage inflicted by odds, 15 timer counts. Okay, it's a support buff, but it's, it, this literally has not changed. They didn't change it. It's, it's the same. They didn't even give it blast armor, okay? The green card is Resource Own Health by 15% and Key by 50. That is the same. 20% of damage inflicted for 15 timer counts. That is the same. 15, uh, and then sorry, sorry no, 30%. Whoa, 30% of special move and ultimate damage inflicted. Activates one. Okay, so you know what they did with this? This isn't actually, I mean, it is, a, it is technically a buff, but it's not really a buff because this used to be 15%, but you could use it twice. Now it's just one. They just they just condensed it into one. Which I guess is better. But remember, this is a character that draws green cards. So I don't know how rare it would have been anyway to get this. Okay. Ultimate is Strike for the Future. Massive impact damage. Minus one percent enemy seen damage cut for three counts. That is the same. Shortens allied tag, future, or Vegeta clan sub count by five, and then restores own vanishing gauge by 100%. Is this, am I looking at the Zenkai version of this character? This is the same character. They, they, they literally did nothing. They, this, this is all the same. <laughs> this is the, all this, this is all the same. Okay. Main ability. Let me just scroll up here so I can compare this. Draws the ultimate arts card strike for the future next. Restores own key by 30. Uh, and then 30% ultimate damage inflicted for 20 timer counts. So the only thing they changed about this is they gave him 10 more keys. It used to be 20 key nuts, 30. whoop de doo um, Zenkai, this is definitely Red Future. Yeah. I mean, Red Future. We have Merge Zamasu, we have the Androids. Who else is on Red Future? Those are the two that come to mind. Merge Zamasu and the Androids. Uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, we have like... Red Rose. We have the Zenkai Blue Vegeta. We have that red Super Saiyan Blue Goku in case he gets Zenkai at some point, but that's it's really it. You're not really getting much value out of this. Um, the Z ability, just to do you guys know, uh, both defenses just to future or Vegeta clan. I mean, the, 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 at least this is a good bench character for the future, right? If red, if if uh, future gets a really good red character in the in, in the in the future, ha ha ha. Uh, <laughs> then this character would be actually a really good bench option because they're double buffing a stat for future and they are Zenkai buffing red future. So this actually could be a good Zenkai buffer for the bench in the future or the future tag. So that's something to keep your eye on. Um, all right, let's just get this over with. I'm sure this is going to be spectacular. 20% to damage inflicted against tag regen or Android. That is the same. Applies the following effects to self when this character enters the battlefield, draws a special arts card next, activates once. That is the same. Uh, 20 key? Whoa, that's brand new. They didn't used to get that before. They're, they're going wild on this character. 20 key? Calm down. Um, and then card draw speed by one level 15 counts. That is uh, also the same. 10% uh, damage inflicted by allies tag feature or Vegeta clan for 10 counts every time this character uses a strike or a blast card. That is the same. 
Um, and then we have... What is this? Applies the following effects to allies when this character is switched to standby. Okay, so they gained 10% healing. Because they didn't used to have the healing, it was just the key, the 30 key. But it only activates twice. So here, here's my issue with characters that, that have restrictions like this. My, my question is, why restrict it? Like, why limit this to two times? We've had characters in the game that are able to continuously heal just constantly throughout the fight that are years old that don't have restrictions on this. Like, so I, I, I struggle to, to comprehend why they make this a, a restricted mechanic, like Super Baby 2. I wouldn't really call him a particularly game-breaking character. Has an un well, I mean, it's restricted to a tag, but um, it, it's not limited to an, a certain amount of times you can use it. Vados, like all these characters that are not particularly great, have this mechanic that is not restricted to a certain amount of times you could use it. So I'm not really sure why they limit that, but whatever. Applies the following effects itself when this battle starts. 50% damage inflicted. That is the same. Re Whoa! Reduces damage by 30%. They, that went up a whole 5% from 25. Oh, they're they're insane. They're insane. 5% more damage reduction? They're GG. It's over. Uh, following effects occur depending on the number of timer counts elapsed from battle start while this character is not defeated. 20 counts elapsed. We have 20% damage inflicted. That is the same. 35 counts elapsed. Minus 5 to own arts costs. That is the same. 50 counts elapsed. 20% damage inflicted by allies cannot be cancelled. That is the same. So the good thing about this character from now on is that they actually have no like they, they have no choice but to give this character new abilities because they did not have these unique abilities prior to the Zenkai. So no matter what, these are new abilities. <laughs> what this character is not doing anything new that we've seen so far. Do you, do you guys know how ridiculous these two new unique abilities have to be to make this character even remotely usable? Like, come on. Fighters confronting despair. The following effects occur when this character enters the battlefield if 20 timer counts have elapsed from battle start. 15% damage for 15 counts. 50% to cure recovery for 10 timer counts. We're just gonna keep by 20. Uh, it's not good enough. Hope binding present and future applies the following effects to self according to the tags of battle members other than this character when battle starts. So if there's a tag future in the party, 20% um, strike damage inflicted cannot be canceled. Um, so that's just a permanent buff. Okay, that's, that's you know, something. Uh, and then, yeah, the, I love this one. 20% blast damage if there's a Vegeta clan battle member in the party. Yeah, they're going to be they're going to be just destroying everybody with their blast attack, especially when future is literally a completely strike based team. I, it just like they had to give Vegeta clan like the, the, the most worthless one of these buffs, right? Just to rub it in. Uh, if there's a tag hybrid Saiyan in the party, reduces damage received by 10%, cannot be canceled. So, I mean, the, the good thing, um, you, you know what it actually says here? So, this is a bit, act this is actually a bit confusing, the wording of this uh, unique ability, because it says in the, on the top portion, according to the tags of battle members. But then it says, if there is a tag future Vegeta clan or hybrid Saiyan in the party, it doesn't say battle member. I'm assuming that's a typo. Because for literally every single unique ability that's ever existed in the history of this game, they've specified battle members, which they did here, but it's it's kind of ambiguous because it, it then says party, which is like the same wording as like an ultra ability. It's, it's weird. I don't know why. It's, it, it, you have to be in the actual battle with these characters. So you have to be running this character with um, a, a, a like, okay, because it says other than this character, right? So you have to be running with another future member, another Vegeta clan member, and another hybrid Saiyan. I'm telling you guys right now, you're not running another hybrid Saiyan on future unless it's future Gohan. And I'm actually not really that big on future Gohan right now. I don't think he's really, I don't think he makes the cut anymore. Um, so you're not getting the extra damage reduction, which is like the best thing on this by far. So yeah, this character looks kind of, uh, like one of the worst Senkais we've ever received. So that's, that's, that's cool. You know, sometimes we just get these these horrible characters. But again, this is not a character where like they're, they're designed to come in and just like destroy the game. This is their function, right? 
Now, it might not be that crazy right now because just the, the lack of good red options for future. But I'm telling you right now, at any point in the future, when the future tag gets a viable red character, or a, a, I guess I should say a better red character, because I think Zamasu and the androids are still actually decent. But like a, a, a frontlining red character for future comes out, this Trunks and Mai are going to be like the first character you include on bench because that's they're just providing too many stat buffs. Like 75 and 70% of both defenses from just this character alone. That's that's crazy. Um, all right, so a disappointing Zenkai there in terms of their actual technical abilities in combat, but a good bench character for the future. Um, let's check out the equipment we got this week. And then that'll be a wrap here. So we go to archive, and then we got this over here. I assume this is going to be the new PvP equipment. Well, let's see. So this is just for future. That's pretty expansive there's a lot of it, 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 in case you guys weren't aware there are a lot of future tag characters in the game because the game literally cannot stop giving buffs to the future team uh 10 hp restoration 20 strike attack and a 10 percent that's that's pretty good this is actually pretty good equipment and i feel like again i say this almost every single week at this point when we get these generic gold equipments a lot of the time and i would say probably most of the time at this point considering the power creep we've been getting with equipment most of the time, if you are an established player in this game, you are going to just be using Awakened or Unique Equipment on all your characters. There's going to be very few instances where normal gold equipment like this are, are preferred and better than Awakened slash Unique Equipment just because they give way more stats. Like they're, The discrepancy in stats you're getting from those equipment are just way better than just these generic gold ones. But I feel like this might be one of the very few exceptions right i mean future does have a lot of uh really good equipment options so maybe not but this is actually uh, it, it's up for consideration because this is actually pretty good I, I don't think they completely missed the mark with this equipment i think it's pretty good okay that's a good start for equipment i believe we have yeah we have a unique equipment here this is obviously going to be a co-op equipment you could tell because it's right next to all the other co-op equipments on the list here um we'll see if they continue doing the trend of like giving uh very specific like, so like for this one, or not, not that this one, like uh, this one right here, where it's just you have to have three of the same tag in your team to get the buffs. What is this? This is for future and green. So I wonder who they're buffing with this. Uh, okay, so this is very basic 20% strike attack, 30% strike defense, and then 32% to blast defense. Um, okay, so I mean, again, this is a very generic equipment. I mean, you just just giving you a bunch of stats and that's it. There's nothing like in depth to go over about this. I actually think it's pretty good. I mean, it's going to cater more towards people who are, uh, who, who play more with a defensive style in mind, but it's giving you an, like this, this is a prime example of literally what I just talked about. Like you go back up to this equipment over here and like, yeah, this is good. And the, the, the types of stats that it's giving you are really good. Like HP, HP restoration, obviously really, really uh, valuable on equipment. But like this just giving you so much more raw stats that it's really hard to prioritize a gold equipment like that one over this. Th this is just providing you way more stats. It's just the, the differential in what it's providing is too much. It's too big to really prioritize the other equipment over this one, at least in my opinion. I think the HP is, is, is extraordinarily valuable on equipment. And so there are, I guess, instances where maybe it's better to use the other one if you want to just like stack HP. Um, but I think more often than not, you're going to obviously want to go with this one. And this is a, a pretty specific equipment in terms of who you're going to be using this on because it's green and future. So obviously they want Ultra Rose to use this. I mean, what other green future characters are, are people really using right now? The green LF trunks? I'm going to tell you right now, no. I've, I've maybe run into one of him in the past like two months. <laughs> That green LF trunks. Talk about one of the one of the most disappointing LFs on release. Oh, actually, you know who I see every now and then is the uh, Zenkai LF Blue Vegeta. I see him every now and then. He's obviously an exceptionally good bench character. And if you can, like, okay, so like uh, there are a decent amount of blue characters running around. Seventeen Beast Gohan, Zamasu. That Vegeta actually could catch some of them. Now, two of them have, or sorry, all, no, sorry, all three of them have endurance. So. The uh, lock and snipe ultimate from him is not going to be as good as it was, but he actually can still put in work. I've had him tank my rushes before type neutral, right? So he's actually not bad. So this could be a decent equipment for him as well. If you guys are still running him. Um, and I believe that is it. I don't think Russia's resetting this week, so we shouldn't have a new Awaken equipment, but let's just check just in case. 
And yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I hate looking at these. These are like one of the biggest, dumbest mistakes. Or not, I don't want to say mistake, but it's one of the dumbest things I've ever done is the way that they are handling these equipments, but whatever. So I guess that's going to be it for this week. It's a rather, uh, rather, I guess, I don't want to say small update because we're getting other stuff in the form of like Hoi Poi and stuff like that. But in terms of like new characters equipment, it's not that crazy this week. So um, let me know down below what you guys think of the incredible Senkai Trunks and Mai, as well as the new equipment we're getting here. I will be doing a showcase of Trunks and Mai, uh, recording that right after this video. So hope you guys are looking forward to that. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next one.